Yeah, and uh, that the race that he actually won last year put him right on the verge of the semi-final, only to miss out on uh, position countback. Um, but let's no, not put it past him. He 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 went on and beat a few of the top Europeans in that. It wasn't just any win. He he beat guys who were in the final and in the semi-finals. Absolutely, and uh, so he can be expected to put a tough performance out there uh, in the races, uh, especially when in a straight fight. You certainly wouldn't spill his beer, would you, Slavic Piskors? Um, right, Michael Beddoes is up there as well, and Rob Duma. Now, Rob Duma is interesting because he is, interestingly, another Speedway rider from Poland, a friend of Slavic Piskors. In fact, it was Slavic that got him into this uh, event and karting generally. So Rob Duma, another one moving from two wheels to uh, to four. Rob Duma not quite had the same results as uh, as... Uh, the the other speedway rider uh, Slavic Piskors, but Rob Duma he's well chipping away at it. We tend to when we're comparing these two uh, great friends, um, we do really look at Slavic. But Rob Duma could have something to say in this. I wouldn't really mind yet. Uh, Cheyenne Davis, a uh, multiple podiums in the Natska series, and uh, and then Chris Pease. Chris Pease has done an awful lot of things there. He's only done half a season last year, but he's going to be back with the Rugby Cart Club uh, regular with them. But he has been the champion. Um, before uh, in the NKC and CSMA Club Championships, uh, 2014, 2015. And of course, Michael Weddle, Michael Weddle, he's out there. BRKC finalist in 2015, Raceland uh, champion from Edinburgh. Quite a few Scottish drivers coming down from Edinburgh. And uh, they tend to show well, even if we saw poor Asim Akram getting uh, well duffed up in the last place finish and bundled pit stop and all that in the last race. Um, Right, so we, we're about to uh, conclude the qualifying laps and the, uh, the first drivers through are going to be, uh, that's Chris Pease on the uh, pole position at the moment. Michael Weddell has moved to pole now. He's on the uh, provisional pole. It's all about where Matthias Gruten comes in and Matthias Gruten predictably takes the pole. It's going to be a hard one to beat. Um, we're still getting the carts coming through, but can you see anyone beating Matthias Gruten? No, absolutely not. Weddle was really my shout to beat him. Although Rob Duma jumps in at third just behind Mike Weddle. But that is, what's that, three and a half tenths? Double world champion, really? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Matthias Groton showing exactly why he is a double world champion. But showing well is Michael Weddle. Rob Duma and Slavic Piskors, we would talk about them in the race build up there. And um, of course, saying about how Rob Duma could well do something. And he has, he's put one over on his mate. Yeah, well, I, I raced at uh, Slavic's party here. We had a, a two-hour two endurance, and uh, I was on a team with Rod Duma, and he was he was flying. He's 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 a real under the radar driver, but uh, he's definitely I I can see him staying ahead of Slavic and actually challenging Mike here. Well, it's going to be very interesting uh, because, of course, Slavic Piskors we know is a, is a is a tough fighting type of competitor. He's in fourth place. Um, if if he can catch him, he, he will have a pop up, every one of them in front of him. He's not going to be put off by Matthias Gruten, double world champion. He's going to go for this win himself from fourth place. Oh, absolutely. Actually, I was looking at the uh, competitors here. Matthias Gruten, obviously, 2014-15 BRKC final. Had a slight contact with Ed White, which caused a little bit of controversy. He's a fighter. Mike Weddle, he's Scottish. He's a fighter. And then you have the two behind them who, who are not going to let up. So this, is, this, could, this actually has the makings of a really intense race. I don't think we're going to see the kind of uh, runaway victory we saw in the previous uh, heat race. Chris Pease, of course, uh, Chris Arrow Pease, down in fifth place. And uh, Chris there is, um, well, he's going to be looking for points as well. And uh, as, we, as we work down the order, it, the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, and 10th, they could actually be all in many different positions. Anyway, here we are for the start. Leading the way is double world champion Matthias Groton leads the field with uh, Michael Weddle behind him. Now Weddle's on the attack immediately on into the style section, but uh, Groton's got it covered. Meanwhile, the two poles are tight behind them and it's still absolutely nose to tail. Matthias Groton has the makings of a cart length lead, but as we look to the back stretch now, Sean Briley, Groton does have his hands full, double world champion or not. Yeah, Mike Weddle was right on the back of him at the start. And actually, they're already starting to gap uh, Rob Duma and Slawek. Uh, they're, Rob Duma already going partly defensive. But uh, I see Gruton. Yeah, that's, that's half a cart length. I can see him pulling out a cart length by the end of this. I think he's just got a little bit more out of the snail section than Weddle does. Absolutely, and pulling away in the lead, it's the top five with, uh, at the tail of that top five is Chris Pease. Chris Pease is on the tail of Slavic Piskors. And... Uh, well, they're really, really going for it, these top five. Uh, Sean, was, you were right, absolutely, about uh, the, the, the two poles dropping back a little bit with uh, Duma getting defence. Here we are on the back stretch. There is Matthias Gruten. There is uh, Weddle. And here comes Rob Duma. And Rob Duma and Slavic Piskors and Chris Pease are definitely not getting dropped. And they are going to stay in contention. The question could be, will anyone try and pit out of this? Sean, 
I think the top five are wise to stay in the fight for the moment. Would you say that? Yeah, I don't think anyone's getting held up. Actually, the only person who might be getting a little bit frustrated is Chris Pease in fifth. He seems to have a little bit more than Slawek. But uh, actually, this is a really good show for Chris Pease. He's never really been challenging the top five right off the bat. But here, as you can see, he's nose to tail with Slawek. And I wonder if we'll see a move from him. Absolutely. Chris B is a man to watch in fifth place. There he is in the green helmet on screen now, just turning into the corner there. So it's Groton, Weddell, and here come the two poles, Duma, Piscors, and then Chris Pease. Now, Chris Pease is the one who's really most fighty in all of this at all. Um, he is on the back of Slavic Piscors, and Clean Oh, we've got a pit stop. We've got a pit stop. It's the 15. The 15 is Chris Machal. He's... Uh, pit stopping out of sixth place i think that could be a wise move there uh, he resumes in 10th place but he is the first pit stopper and uh, meantime the the actual fight is uh, with chris pease chris pease all over the back of uh, former Polish Speedway champion and Slavic Piscos. Matthias Groton leads the way with michael weddell he michael weddell is not allowing the double world champ to pull away the um and the gosh the uh, the the organizers are on everything already. Apparently, there's been some controversy with drivers not slowing down after the checkered flag. They do need to come around to the pits, but the drivers, they're already, uh, there's a few people getting in trouble for not slowing down after the checkers. So everyone nearly, really needs to be on the case with that one. And uh, for martial safety, they're calling it. So everyone needing to back it off a little bit after the checker. I think some racing resuming. Talking of resuming racing, Michael Weddell is... Uh, what two car lengths behind Matthias Gruten, and that uh, that says a lot for anybody. Michael Weddell really meaning business. This he's come down from Edinburgh yet again. He's he's shown a, a little bit of a, a checkered past at BRKC, a little bit sort of a Johnny Elliott performer, really. Sometimes it it goes well and then it goes badly for Michael Weddell, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, 2014, he was uh, straight up into the final P10. I think he we had a good fight with one of the Europeans again. But uh, then again, for the last two years, he's not. He's he's been. He, he made it into the semi-finals, I believe, last year after a great fight with uh, Jake Campbell Mills in the final heat for the final spot. But um, no, I naturally, I was about to say that Mike looks like he's um, tagging Matthias quite well, but actually, that lap, I think he's just gone and lost a couple of tenths. Looking back, I. I would, if I were Chris, I would actually stay out. But I think a pit stop has to come as soon as he can break the gap to number 17, who is uh, uh, Emil, uh, Emil Ski. As soon as he breaks that gap, I reckon if he pits, he can jump slow it because he has got a lot more speed than him. Absolutely right. Um, <laughs> the tempting thing, though, Chris probably is enjoying the fight and he may not be thinking like we're thinking. Meanwhile, in the commentary box, we've got Lewis Manley. Um, Lewis, obviously, uh, you're gunning for the, uh, for the title this year. Um, that was uh, Philpot checked out in that last race. Uh, how do you read that one? Yeah, absolutely, because um, he, he was gone from the start because uh, he, when he had cart 20, I knew he would do pole and win the race because it's looking, out of the three heats, it's looking pretty fast so far. And, uh, and in my heat, I, second was the maximum I could do, so I was no way going to challenge Philpot for the win. So at least I'm happy with the start, but got to try and win my next heat. Absolutely, and uh, to be fair, the, both of you gapped quite well to Sam Spinell, who we know is very fast. So uh, both of you two absolutely flying out there. Um, going into the next bunch. Oh, we got a pit stop. Sorry, we got a pit stop. Okay, and we've had some excitement down uh, <laughs> while we were talking to Lewis Manley. There was uh, a. a a stopper came out and nearly stuck uh, Matthias Gruten in the wall. So um, a real tight one down there developing. So we've got uh, Gruten, who still has a good lead, three or four cart lengths from Michael Weddell. And, uh, and then, of course, the, uh, the back marker. We've got uh, in the pits now, it's Chris Pease. Chris Pease does pit out of fifth place. We were talking whether he would actually be enjoying the fight too much to think of pitting, but he has pitted himself out of fifth place and uh, it drops him down to about seventh at the moment. That does give Slavic Piscors in fourth place a nice little breather there. Uh, Matthias Gruten leading the way from Michael Weddle. There we are. There's Rob Duma and then the back marker and then Slavic Piscors. Slavic Piscors is going to uh, be keen to get hold of Duma in third place. He could do with the points. In fact, he comes in the pits. Here comes Slavic Piscors. So Slavic Piscors takes the first pit stop, moves on to the second one, and uh, we'll see what he can do. Oh, just about. Gosh, he was rolling and before that green came on. So he, he probably judged that one to perfection. He's come out way ahead of uh, Chris P. So Slavic Piscors done himself a big ton of favours in that um, in that pit stop just there it is Matthias Gruten though is still in the lead he's the fastest cart on the track by a tenth of a second from Michael Weddle no one yet into the uh, 
into the 32s, but we have Rob Duma pitting out of third place. Rob Duma has come into the pits. He's uh, made his first stop. Here he is making his second. This is the third place driver. He needs to come out of Slavic Piscors. Piscors has been held up though. We've got someone else in the pits, but Piscors has been held up and Duma is comfortable in third place. 17 into the pits is uh, Emil Ski. Emil Ski we can see in the pits as we speak. He's going to go down the order a bit uh, with that. He um, pitted behind Chris Pease and in fact drops to ninth. Now, Matthias Grun and Michael Weddle in the pits. Michael Weddle pits out of second place. Sean, Michael Weddle into the pits. How do you read this situation? Well, the first stop was pretty good. He's come up to the second stop. Oh, he's, he's overshot it a little bit. He's on the middle line, but he's come back out. And, well, look at that. It's a completely clear gap to Rob Duma. I just want to point out the gap between Rob Duma and Slavik. Now, yes, Slavik was held up, but Rob Duma, I'm pretty sure, has the fastest pit stop lap we've seen so far. That was completely on the line. Slavik's was okay, and as you can see, Chris has dropped off. His was uh, significantly slower. I think that's where Chris lost all of his time. So now he's going to have to make a move on track. But I expect to see Gruten in the pits in the next couple. Absolutely. Great work in the pits there by Rob Duma, who is uh, third place. And uh, in the pits again, we have, uh, I believe it's the race leader, Matthias Gruten. Matthias Gruten comes out of the uh, pits in the lead. And what a lead there, Sean. What a lead by uh, uh, Matthias Gruten. Um, incredible that he, he's able to strategize that and strategize an even bigger lead. Yeah, no, he's um, he's uh, he did a forty, what was it forty two three Bjorn, forty three three, which is even quicker than Rob Doom is again the quickest lap time we've seen, uh, the quickest pit stop lap we've seen to date. Um, but I think this race is uh, all but wrapped up for him now. I don't see him being caught. Absolutely, Matthias Gruten though is being held up by Backmarker. He's uh, oh gosh, yes, he nearly lost some time there. That's uh, Shane Davis, who's got multiple uh, uh, podiums in uh, in other forms of karting, but uh, being. Uh, Lapped now by Matthias Groton as he continues on his way. Yes, Michael Weddle was able to close up, but it's Matthias Groton we're talking about here. This is someone by uh, whom most others judge themselves. Oh, and a gosh, a tight one at the back there. I think that involved Michael uh, Weddle waving his fist. Yeah, again, that was a back marker, just not quite getting out of the way. Tried to leave a gap, couldn't see anyone coming inside and closed the door and pushed Mike straight into the wall. I was about to say, Matthias actually lost one and a half seconds up behind the back marker. Um, it's uh, about the same, and Weddle is still stuck behind, and uh, I can see him getting a little bit of Scottish rage on him now. Absolutely, uh, yes, that wall, and bundling his way through, my goodness, that was a swiping off. This is all good news for Rob Duma. Rob Duma is in third place, and this really is a great showing by the pole. Uh, Rob Duma is really trying to squeeze past the back marker now, and that has put him really in with a shot of Michael Weddle. Uh, only a few car lengths, Slavic Piscors behind, and Chris Pease now closing in on Slavic Piscors. Uh, Matthias Gruten getting caught behind another back marker. Gruten is not having it his own way in this race. He Great strategy, but when it's coming down to actually getting through back markers, we've never seen Gruten struggle like this before. No, we haven't, and actually I've just seen Ollie Fox actually run out into the middle of the field with the blue flag to try and make sure that people uh, get let by because um, obviously it's not they're not quite seeing it as they come around the corner uh, obviously uh, the tough part of it really is the back markers they're all uh, a grade carters and uh, they are in their own race they they are trying not to lose they're not used to having to get out of the way of uh, of leaders and unfortunately uh, in this case it is double world champion that they're having to get out of the way of um so you can expect them to be quicker meantime michael weddle is maintaining a decent gap and rob Duma. in fact when you think first to third that's as close as we've seen so far, Sean. Um, is there a chance in this for Rob Duma, or do you think Matthias Groton will actually continue to increase his lead? He is currently fastest, 33-0. Not yet a 32-second lap, but 33-0 is the fastest race lap so far. Yeah, um, I don't really see these positions changing too much, aside from that battle for fourth and fifth. Now, Chris Peace has completely closed in, and Weddle is caught up behind a back marker a little. He's going to get let through, but not without a little bit of a fight for some reason. Um, but no, fourth and fifth. Now, Chris Pease is closing in, and Chris Pease is actually second quickest on the track behind Gruton. He is actually quicker than Weddle on his uh, fastest lap. And, yeah, I can see some interesting battles later on. That's, that's, that's what we've got to be looking at. Absolutely. And yet again, we've seen Rob Duma benefiting, really, from backmarker uh, uh, kerfuffle. The backmarker waves uh, Rob Duma through. And uh, Rob Duma, we're looking at Weddle, and here comes Duma on screen now. There's Rob Duma. So we can see the gap is really relatively close from uh, Weddle to him, probably close as it's been. Uh, Slavic Piscors has a backmarker. And Chris Pease, Chris Pease, once again, all over the back of uh, Slavic Piscors. Um, Chris P's a great showing. Uh, it makes you think we could actually get even better from him as the event goes on. Yeah, no, he's 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 something 
he, he always does tend to get better as it goes on. Um, but as you can see right now, this is the closest Chris piece has been since before the pit stop, and Slavik's already starting to go defensive. Um, just another brief note for everyone else who's uh, stood up watching at the moment, the Bandit Foods is now open downstairs if you want to go down, uh, down Jonathan's there waiting for you. Absolutely. Formula Fast, of course, famous for its pizza, but uh, they've also got Bandit Foods outside the front door as well. And uh, so uh, there's uh, plenty to keep people warm food-wise. Um, we've obviously uh, already mentioned about some people getting in trouble for not slowing down after the check of flag, obviously safety risk. Uh, also got to remember, uh, there's a few people, uh, Sean, falling foul of... Um, Crossing the, the white line, the blend line, coming out the pits is vital. They stay that side, or Ollie's just going to be kicking out penalties, isn't he? Yeah, and we all know how Ollie likes to kick out a few penalties here and there. But uh, <laughs> he's, uh, no, yeah, seriously, guys, uh, stick to the inside of the white lines. We already saw Gruson almost being pushed in a wall, and it can only end badly. Absolutely. I mean, going, going back to Ollie, it has to be said, he, he, runs, a, he runs a good show here, and he's, uh, he's, not, uh, he's not one to be backward in coming forward about... Uh, dishing things out he will bust people if they if they keep messing around like this. we've already seen him in the middle of the racetrack waving flags at people so um and we're only on uh, on heat four so uh maybe <laughs> we'll probably take him out outside for a good shooing if uh, things get worse than this yeah yeah well i think anyone who falls foul of him is probably gonna have to go get him a brisket sandwich from downstairs i heard i heard he was yeah yeah that's that's a thumbs up from ollie uh, would you want to fall foul of ollie oh absolutely not he's he's easy five foot six it's, it's quite scary Absolutely. Oli, uh, Demetrius Fox uh, with Phil Stanley, of course, running a great show here at Formula Fast. Um, they've really taken this event to, to themselves, made it their own, working very tight with Brad Philpott. They have a, a great input. And that's why we get people like double world champion uh, Matthias Gruten, uh, who's now gone into the 32 second bracket, uh, wanting to come and race here in the British Championship. A uh, real sort of international field. Showing how it should be done, though, in a sort of Bradley Philpott kind of way, is uh, Matthias Gruten, and uh, he's, he's looking good for the win in this race. Um, Sean, uh, Michael Weddle's still there in second, but he's now three tenths of a second uh, back from uh, Matthias in terms of pure pace. Yeah, I think this is where it comes into it, that um, Weddle's come down, has a few practices now, and, and one lap, and he can get that focus down, but, but I mean... Matthias is uh, experienced in endurance racing, so he can do this for probably another three hours solid, no problems, whereas Weddle's focus might be starting to waver a little bit. And obviously he, he looked a little bit shaken ever since he was held up by the back marker and he lost a bit of focus and he got a little bit angry. So he, he's calmed himself down now and he's actually starting to gap Rob Duma again. Uh, he's got ju just shy of two seconds now. But um, yeah, I'm still looking at this Chris Pease battle because this is by far the best running I've seen from Chris and I'm kind of excited. To, I'm actually kind of cheering for him here. Absolutely. We've just seen them on the backstretch on screen there. Chris Pease in the green helmet. Here we are. Here's Chris Pease in the green helmet, chasing down Slavic Piscors in the generally white helmet in front of him. And uh, this is where the battle is, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, Slavic Piscors, we've seen him win a BRKC heat race. Um, and he really has to be one of the uh, increasingly established stars. And uh, Chris Pease having a look at position there. I'd look at this. There they are. There's Piscors leading Pease as we come onto the backstretch. So. Will Pease have a look? He's looking towards the inside. He's thought better of it, but he's caused Slavic to have to defend. Now, that Slavic runs wide as a result. Pease is all over the back of him. He's absolutely got the attention, full attention of Piscors, hasn't he? Um, can you see something coming of this, Sean? I think um, Slavic's wise to the back straight. He's just gone down at the middle. Nothing epic. It would take a, it would take a full blow and a move like they did on Tyler Mays last year to get by him there. That actually, Slavic's line through the last corner is very wide. And if Chris is brave enough, I think that's going to be where he has to make his move. Because through the snail and down the back straight, as we come down again, Slawek's already taking the middle line. Yeah, he's going to have to do it uh, in this complex here. Absolutely. We're looking again at the uh, fourth place battle there with Slavic Piscors and Chris Bees. But it's actually quite a cat and mouse battle from second through third, fourth and fifth. And the interesting thing to note is on terms of pure fastest laps, it is Chris Pease in fifth place who's currently second fastest in the race. And he's being held up. And that, that's the point I was saying that when he came out of the pits, he did actually lose about two and a half to three seconds, which he's closed, managed to close down in just over five minutes. And that is no mean feat. But if he can't, and this is why qualifying is so important. It is, it is possible to, to overtake, it is. I've, I've done it, I've, it, you know, it, it feels so good when it happens, but it is still very difficult. And for someone who's not able to attack someone ahead, they, the guy ahead can then just sort of defend without any worries because he know he can't go any further, he can only go back. So why would he give, leave an opening? Well, that's very interesting insight there, Sean. Uh, the, you know, 
you, you had to actually fight to your front, didn't you? And you made it work. It is very possible to overtake here, uh, and the and the top races are showing it is. Um, Slavic Piskors, once again, on the back stretch there, we've seen him uh, getting uh, defensive there against Chris Pease. Um It's p possible that uh, an unchained Chris Pease, shall we say, could well have been running uh, as, as high as third, maybe. Uh, certainly, he's got the pace to run up there. Uh, we've got Matthias Gruten uh, in, the, in the lead, showing why he's... Uh, He's a double world champion. He has the fastest lap of this race. Uh, Chris Pease in fifth place, though, is the second fastest. Um, and Duma, Piscors, Weddle, they're all right up there, too, in terms of pure time. Um, Sean, it's getting interesting with uh, Matthias Gruten because he's actually catching up to two back markers. Could this be uh, a chance for Weddle? Well, I, no, in all honesty, I think Weddle's now too far back. Well, he's, he's, he's being gapped at, you know, he's, he's losing a second every three laps now. Um, I think his main worry about is the fact that he will catch those back markers too and his worry is going to be Rob Duma. But I'm, I also feel like fourth and fifth will catch them and then we'll see what how smart Slavik can be and uh, if he can keep us cool. Absolutely, and here comes Michael Weddle. He's moving ahead of a, a back marker. There's Duma. And here comes the Piscors and Pease battle. This really is quite something. I think Chris Pease has had a look at every part of the racetrack to try and pass Slavic Piscors, but Slavic is a very, very tough competitor. Uh, Sean, you've got something for us? Yeah, actually, I was just looking at the times, and it's just dawned on me that visually, Rob Duma looks a lot closer to Slavic than before. Despite the battling, they're actually closing in on third whilst Weddle's pulling away. I'm not sure... I mean, Rob's last time, I just checked, was a 34.5 compared to, you know, they gained two tenths on him whilst battling. And uh, that, that, that could spice up. But as there's only two minutes left, I'd be surprised if they catch him. Well, what you're saying makes perfect sense, Sean, because Slavic Piscors, he's, um, he's one of these people who uh, he can fight without losing, without losing time. Uh, Chris Pease, as we were saying, is the second fastest. So uh, Chris Pease is going to match Piscors, whatever Piscors does in terms of time. We can expect that. Um, and Piscors is able to fight without losing time. That's bad news for third place Rob Duma. Um, meanwhile, we can see that uh, Matthias Gruten, he continues on his way. As you said, Sean, he could do this all day long. Also, um, from his point of view as well, with the endurance racing, he is a, uh, a member of the fabled Blue Star Racing team there. One, one of, if not the top European team when it comes to endurance racing, and Matthias Gruten is one of their top racers. Uh, features regularly uh, with that team in the big European uh, long distance races. So battling back markers is not going to be a problem for him. We've got um, Chris Pease is still second fastest in terms of the uh, the lap times. Uh, he and uh, he is faster than Rob Duma, who's running third. Somehow he's doing that uh, while uh, while battling with uh, Slavic Piscors. Um, it's Pease. We really didn't consider him as being the star of this race, but uh, arguably he's he's been the most exciting of the lot so far. I've been really excited to watch him because this is just not something I expected and I'm pleasantly surprised. But I just I figured out why he was able to do that lap. He took a small shot at Slawek coming out of the snail section where he is now into this left-hander and backed off. Then he was able to use the gap that he created to put in a lap time straight up like that. So, you know, if he qualified higher, I reckon he would have actually been the best shout to uh, keep Matthias honest. Absolutely. I was thinking earlier that uh, Chris Pease, uh, an unchained Chris Pease, may well have been um, uh, a, top, a top three competitor. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> he's certainly showing a great form here, and it's really tightening up at the back there. We've got some back markers as well as, or one back, two back markers, as well as Rob Duma, Slavic Piscors. And look at this in the snail section. It's getting very tight indeed. We've got Duma third as they come onto the back stretch. There is Duma in third. Now here are two back markers, and Piscors fighting his way through from Crispies. A very, very tough, uh, tough battle. We've, uh, we've got the checker now. It's Matthias Groton who wins. Matthias Groton has won from Michael Weddle, but look what's going on back. Chris Pees having a last-ditch effort in the final hair from Slavic Piscors. Um, Piscors, uh, Weddle's taken second, but here comes and Duma third. But there's Piscors just pipping uh, Chris Pease there, waving at each other. A bit of a handshake there between the fourth and fifth place drivers. What a finish there. It was only for fourth place. Um, we've got Bjorn Vermeulen up here. Um, Bjorn, you won the first race, opened your uh, 2017 um, well racing year, as well as BRKC in fine style. How was it for you? It actually looked pretty straightforward from my fear, but I bet it wasn't like that in the car. Well, it was pretty straightforward, but um, after the first qualifying, I messed up the qualifying just a little bit. I lost about one tenth, two tenths in the snail section. I drifted a little bit too much. Um, so, first of all, I was happy and I wasn't happy that the uh, qualifying started again. 
then I thought I was, a f I was first and second qualifying, reasonably happy, but uh, Oliver Bayani was uh, really close uh, behind me. After the first few laps, uh, went pretty good, but um, I was, yeah, Oliver Bayani was really right behind yeah. me, so I had to put, um, like they say in Belgium, tooth quick. I have to put up the pace a bit. Yes. And, and um, after about 10 laps, I created a gap. I kept uh, going forward. I saw that uh, Regis Gosselin was uh, attacking uh, Oliver Bayani as well. And then uh, I saw a few back markers, did my pit stop, really concentrating that I didn't mess up the pit stop because I was first. And then uh, after that was straightforward, just keep on going, keep up the pace, and then uh, I took the win. So I'm really happy. Excellent, Bjorn. And of course, the, the efforts of Bayani and Gosland behind you um, really forced you to be very correct in all cases, I should imagine.